Hello there, guys, my dear, lovely, and past and high sensitive people. So, this video is about a legendary girl who died, Finnish girl. She was 17, year 17 years old when she died in May 1953. And her case is one of the most famous. Finnish murder cases in Finland's history and this case has been baffling me as well and therefore I wanted to do some investigation on her case I have been reading it I have been reading about it before but I wanted wanted to get into it again I don't know somehow my my intuition was speaking to me about her again and i also felt like i wanted to connect with her spirit so i had a session a medium a mediumship session with her spirit as well and therefore i wanted to give you guys this video uh so if you have not heard about her i'm gonna tell you guys a bit about her story so she was this lovely angelic young woman really kind to everyone really kind person um, and she died that night late in the evening um, it was about 10 40 p.m finish time that Sunday she was cycling home on her bike from the church she walked at the, the local church the place was Isoyoki uh, where she lived and in that town there were a lot of sexual predators uh, mentally ill people, alcoholics who lived there at that time and therefore it is very natural that young women were not safe or maybe if you were a beautiful woman, you know, no matter what age you were it wasn't really safe for you and especially if you were a kind person there were these predator-like people who would just want to take advantage of you. So I just found out about this just, just a while ago because I listened to the audiobook that a history investigator had written about her case. So he was revealing many details about what happened and it just makes me so sad all in all to be thinking about her case and, and everything that happened so it was basically just tough luck what happened to her because she could have avoided you know this from happening some of her, her friends and acquaintances had even offered for her to stay over that night, but she declined. She wanted to go home. And I really feel that in a way she was this stubborn spirit as well. She was a stubborn girl, even though she was so very kind. Um, there were just some things that she was, she was very stubborn at and she wanted to please her father, she wanted to please her parents, to be a good girl. So I feel that this was the reason why she wanted to go home that night. And she did not want to worry them. That her, there had been some things going on that she had kept secret. And one of those things is that she was sex sexually used sexually molested by the local priest 
and it's understandable that she had been very ashamed about this usually because the victims usually are naturally especially when you're a young woman um so she had not been revealing that and i really feel that she felt this this shame within her and she was just looking for peace and clarity uh, and it is shown also in her diaries and she wanted to be just a good girl you know to every everybody and to that priest as well even though he was using her So it is all so very tragic. But yeah, she, so uh, she was on her way, about halfway home that night on her bike and riding across that, that forest because that was the only way she could go. So she would go home. And there were two guys who killed her. Vihtori Lehmusviita and Arvo Hakala. And Vihtori was about 18 years old at the time. And Arvo was Vihtori's brother-in-law and he was about 40 years old at that time. And Vihtori uh, was very interested in having a sexual interaction with a woman because he had not had that. He had a lot of sexual tension and frustration with him, w within him. Uh, and therefore he was just basically looking for a target, a victim, to pour all of that on. So I'm really feeling that he raped Gulliki and Arvo was helping him do this. Arvo had actually attacked some people before in his life and he had been acting a criminal. So therefore it is very natural that he would take part in this, um, even though it's all very sick sick and twisted but still they were working together and Arvo was helping Vihtori do this um, so in that way it was planned but what I also feel is that really they did not mean to kill her but but Arvo had this violent frustration with, within him so these two guys together, they created Kulikki's death in this, this most crucial, terrible, evil way that you can imagine. They attacked her on her way home. This poor girl, this poor angelic, kind being, and they took her life. And it was so sudden that Guliki could not stop it and, and she could not defend herself at all because they attacked her so fast that it all just happened so quickly. So it was about 10.40 p.m. in the evening and she was riding on her bike past them but Arvo stopped her on her tracks. Arvo jumped behind something. Uh, it could have been some blocks of wood um, or something else but of course it was dark so it's hard to see in the woods at that time in the evening. It wasn't summer yet because it was May. So 
it was dark. So you cannot see people if you don't have any sort of light flashlight or, or something. And I'm sure that, you know, Gulik did not have any of those. Um, so Arvo attacked her behind something and just jumped on f in, in, in front of her and he hit her with a stone or a block of wood or both but I'm really feeling that he was using stone but he hit her in the face and he hurt her so much in the face that she got so hurt that she could have easily died out of that hit alone. Basically, she was losing her ability to think clearly in that moment and, and she got very, very, very hurt, injured. Uh, so it was easy to take advantage of, of her body then and to just kill her. So basically that hit alone did kill her. Not completely, but, but almost. And all the strength just ran out of her body. You know, just like that. She was defenseless. And... Vihtori was able to rape her and he took her panties and they also took her belongings like her watch and her bible as well. Uh, Vihtori was actually known for taking some things from some women. And of course, they did not want to be leaving any proof behind. So they were also trying to make sure that nobody would know that it was them who did it. So that is why they were also trying to take some objects and, and to hide them. I really feel that they were both... Uh, well, at least Vihtari was, was in a sort of like this fog, this, this panic when all of this happened. Arvo was more experienced because he had been doing sort of this sort of thing before, attacking people and, and doing that stuff. So to him, it was, wasn't really something new. Um, but Vihtari was more innocent and all he wanted to wanted was to have this sexual relation with a woman. He wanted attention from a woman and since he could not get that naturally, this is just what happened. But I really feel that he did not mean to kill her. He, he did not want her dead. But it was Arvo that caused it. But anyhow, they had to be hiding her body and they were undressing her and leaving her body being withered in the mud. There was this, this swamp because they knew the grounds very well because they had been working there. So it was easy for them in that way. And Arvo was very good at knowing how to bury somebody. So in that way, it was like behavior from a professional psycho killer which Arvo was really being. 
but yeah so I did connect with Guliki Spirit like I said I had a session with her and I want to share some things that I got from her um, I got these messages from her that she was forced down to the ground and raped um, but now as a spirit even though she got killed and raped in this this very very cruel way now as a spirit she's in heaven and she's with her loved ones now and she has peace and she has new understanding of everything she knows that you should always choose love in your life so this is a, this is actually a message from her to every one of you watching this video always 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 keep choosing love no matter what in your life that is what she wanted to do she wanted to be happy she wanted to have love in her life to feel loved every single day and we all deserve to have that in our lives every single day so i really felt that she wanted to give you she wanted to give me this message but also i want to share this message you know <laughs> to you guys because you're my followers and clients and lovely sensitive people she was also a sensitive person i feel and now a spirit she is so happy and balanced she has this peace and new understanding and she has forgiven these guys she has been able to forgive and to rise up above all of that pain and she knows that it was her time to go and that there is actually no death death is actually a very natural thing you just cross over as a spirit your soul lives on as it has lived for thousands of years and your soul is born again and time is only an illusion and heaven also exists just like earth does and universe does so she's in heaven and she just wants to say that there is really no death you know because everything is connected so i'm really feeling all this peace within her and i was very happy and honored to be able to connect with her uh, so a big part of why she went home that night and didn't stay at a friend's place was because she needed her work working clothes i feel that she wanted to be pleasing the priest she wanted to be showing up as, as as this girl who does what she promises to you know because she was a good girl so she wanted her working clothes but also she had the pressure to be showing up as this good girl good girl for her parents so that she so that they would not worry because she was ashamed about her secrets coming up in some way and she was working at the church so she was under a lot of pressure mentally and emotionally in this way and that is why she was also scared to go home that night and and her last sentence to her friend mayu was I guess this will go well because it has gone well before 
meaning the, the trip home on her bike. But she did feel with her intuition in her gut, she was feeling that she would get killed. She was afraid. He would, she was scared. She was insecure. She was feeling that something would happen. But in her heart, she did only want to do the good thing and, and didn't want to have her parents be worried. And I also feel a bit of pressure from her father as well, in a sense. So this is basically um, what I got from her. Um, and I was asking her if she was raped, so I got a clear answer, yes. She told me yes. And that is why she had been undressed also. They could not find any sperm, obviously, you know, not anymore because they found her body a long time after it she had been killed so you don't really have much proof and at, at that time they did not do dna testing so it was a lot harder to find the right killer or killers and especially when you have two killers it's even harder but they did have the answers they did have the right answers but they never got the real proof so that is the sad part with this case. But luckily, now we have some sort of closure because we know that it was Victory and Arvo who did that to her. And it wasn't because they would have hated her or that she would have caused it you know, to herself in any way. No, 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 in, in this way, it was only an accident. So in that way, I feel that it's soothing to think that, you know, it just happened, that it was not her fault or anything and she didn't have any acquaintance to these two people except that she had been seeing Vihtori um, work there but I really feel that Vihtori had noticed her more because he had been having his eye on basically every woman who, who passed him when he was working there. He was working to be digging the place, that area there. But yeah, so this is, in, in short, what I got from this case. And um, thanks again, guys, for watching. And as usual, I would love to have your comments or thoughts or, or anything that might come up as you have watched this video. And I'm, send, I, I'm sending you guys so much love and light, as usual. And don't hesitate to contact me if you want, if you want to have a private reading or mediumship reading with me if you want to contact a loved one. I'm very happy to help you and come subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and um, wishing you a wonderful week. Thanks for being and watching. Namaste.